Okay, everyone, we will call this meeting to order. Uh, before we get into our regular meeting tonight, we are going to begin with a public hearing. So we should go on the record for that. And this is a public hearing to take comment regarding Ordinance 1075-23, an ordinance amending code chapter 220-31 adding subsection EE injection well to the zoning ordinance. So, Mr. Morrison, do you want to do any kind of preamble before we start taking sure, public I'd, comment? Sure, I'll do a brief introduction, all Mr. Right, thank President. You. Um, I think uh, we would all uh, agree that if we had our druthers, we would uh, choose not to have to address this topic. However, uh, since we are under the MPC, we have to provide for the use within our boundaries. Uh, so this draft proposes uh, to regulate uh, injector, injector wells within the municipality of Murraysville. <coughs> proposed to, uh, as a conditional use in the B district on lots of a minimum of five acres, frontage or direct vehicular access to an arterial road, uh, and that the, uh, the borehole not be any closer than 250 feet to the boundary line of the property and 750 feet from a protected structure, which is defined in the ordinance. Um, this uh, particular use, unlike the Marcellus use, which is very defined industrial activity uh, for a period of time, this is a constant activity uh, with trucks uh, coming in and out on a regular basis, uh, delivery of brine and other materials to be injected uh, either through an existing well or a well that is drilled uh, for that purpose. Uh, we have tried to provide a number of provisions uh, that we were not permitted under the Marcellus Ordinance because of Act 13 and, uh, and other uh, regulations and uh, uh, hope uh, that it's comprehensive enough to protect the community as we move forward. Uh, more likely, we would hope that it never happens. I also have uh, comments that I received uh, from two individuals that asked uh, they may be submitted into the record uh, as public comments. I provided counsel and the mayor uh, copies this evening, and I'll give this to the uh, court report. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. So, again, with that acting as a brief introduction, this <coughs> is everyone's chance to come give any comment they would like to give about the injection well. Um, if there's any other issue anyone wants to give public comment on, please wait till we get to our regular agenda. Um, so at this point, I'll open the floor to anyone who wants to comment on the injection well. Sir, and please just state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Tom Pike. Uh, I live on 3806 Greensburg Pike. I'm actually here today to speak on behalf of, behalf of Protect PT, which is a member, uh, we have 33 members in the municipality of Murraysville, including Mr. King, uh, who is here today to grant us standing. All right. So I spent all 18 years of my childhood in Murraysville, right off School Road, and lived here again from 2020 to 2022. Um, tonight, you're considering passing a long overdue ordinance that would limit where corporations can inject fracking wastewater. I grew up just uphill from Franklin Regional. And as a child, I'd play in the forest behind my home and in between the schools. I'd build stick forts and splash in the creeks. I had a lot of playmates. Um, our street was full of young families with kids. When I got to school age, I used to walk to school through that forest every day. My childhood lasted from 1986 to 2005, and in that time, Murraysville had no fracking or wastewater injection wells. And Murraysville has changed. Um, when the pandemic hit in 2020, I moved home again um, so that I could save up to buy a house. So I spent another two years in Murraysville, um, and I could see some, that some things had changed since when I was a kid. Um, my parents' water, which comes from the tap, it's sourced from Be Beaver Run Reservoir, which is surrounded by seven fracking wells. Uh, and I don't remember filtering tap water as a kid, but my parents do now. Um, and my point in saying this is not to bask in childhood nostalgia. Uh, these changes are the result of policy choices, and they're choices which Murraysville Council does not have to continue to make. Um, we can see what happened in Plum when their local government didn't, act, didn't actively protect their communi community. Uh, the proposed injection well ordinance would be a step in a better direction. It would require that an industrial activity take place in places zoned for business, which is exactly where it belongs. It would require that wastewater injection not take place co close to homes, schools, and daycares. It would not ban fracking, or fracking waste injection wells because such a ban would be illegal, but it would prevent the backyard where your children play, play 
from becoming an underground industrial landfill. <clears throat> there are also some ways the ordinance can be improved. You and I have to carry liability insurance on our cars, but the proposed ordinance doesn't yet require drilling corporations to carry this insurance. We recommend requiring operators to carry $25 million in liability insurance. Secondly, it is standard practice in the drilling industry to abandon oil and gas wells when they are no longer profitable, which results in the open wells continuing to leak toxic compound into our air and water, um, toxic compounds into our air and water. Murraysville could require that drilling corporations set aside bonds to pay for the wells to be plugged when they are done. We recommend setting a $25 million bond. These provisions would be common sense additions to an already good ordinance. Uh, lastly, I just wanted to draw your attention to a possible typo. It appears that in the setback section of the ordinance, which again is otherwise strong, the words away from appear to be missing. You probably want to add those just so your meaning is unambiguous. I will be providing a written comment of this uh, for your records. Should I give that to you or to you? Okay, great. I'll give it to you afterwards um, so that you have a chance to review these if you, if you like to. Um, and in closing, I'd just like to say that in 2022, when I was looking for a house, I, I didn't seriously consider putting down permanent roots in Murraysville. Um, I bought a house in, instead in Forest Hills, which is a borough where there are no wells of this kind. Um, and there are still things I love about Murraysville, but no amount of may apples and maple trees is worth uh, air I can't breathe and water I can't drink. So when voting on this ordinance, I think you should consider why young families don't settle here in the numbers they used to, why the street where I grew up uh, with a dozen playmates is quieter now. Um, and you should pass the strongest possible version of this ordinance. Um, I also just received uh, an email from, uh, from a Murraysville resident which I'd like to read very quickly. It's from Alan Halperin, who is unable to attend tonight's meeting. Yes. Sure. Sorry. I, so Alan Halperin, he's a Murraysville resident. He emailed me, asked if I could read this. Uh, he said he's unable to attend tonight's meeting, but the issue of induced seismicity in earthquakes caused by waste injection wells should be raised. This doesn't happen with all injection wells, but it has been documented to occur with some. These are not large quakes, but are generally in the one to three magnitude, which are enough to cut, excuse me, <clears throat> enough to cause cracks and minor structural damage. I'll give you written versions of both of these as well. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Would anyone else like to give public, sir? And again, please just state your name and address for the record. Mark Emerson, 4600 School Road South, Export, Pennsylvania, but I live in Murraysville. <laughs> um, just a couple of questions about <coughs> the location that the injection well would be placed uh, indicated that it would be Zone B. Does that include business overlay? Yeah, any underlying zoning uh, identified as a B district. So if the business overlay has business district zoning as the, uh, the original zoning, it would include that. Um, if either a size location or the 750 foot offset can't be um, identified on the current zoning map, would there be a consideration to rezone a non-B to become a B zone in order to meet the requirements that you folks say we have to provide for an injection well? Would you consider rezoning an area to B in order to make this happen? You can't, yeah. you it, just it, can't provide for one piece of property okay. for this to occur. Well, that's a no. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Would anyone else like to speak in regards to the injection wells this evening? Okay. <coughs> Mr. Morrison, anything else you want to get on the record before we close? No. Uh, on the agenda, we have proposed uh, an action item to authorize advertising for council's consideration. Okay. Wonderful. Could I have a motion to close the public hearing, please? I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Uh, let's go Tony and Jamie. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <coughs> public hearing is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.
This brings us to our regular meeting this evening. Could I have a roll call, please? Mr. Stepanovich? Here. Mrs. Ling? <clears throat> Mr. Spadaro? Here. Mr. McKenna? Mr. Dice? Here. Mr. Lee Mack? Here. Dr. Lee Corns? Here. Mayor Simon? Here. <clears throat> stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay, Mr. Morrison, I believe we did have one amendment this evening. Yes, sir. Um, the... Um, Item 14B uh, is to authorize advertising, uh, not for action. Okay, it looks like this one says advertise. Yeah. Yep, so we should be okay. Changed in the interim. Well, got lucky. Thanks, okay. Riddell. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that brings us to our consent calendar items. Uh, Council, do we have any questions or concerns about the consent calendar items? Okay. Hearing none, can I have a motion to approve the consent calendar items, please? Motion to approve the consent calendar items. Second. Second. Let's go, Carl and Jason. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you, Council. That brings us to comments by the mayor. Thanks, Mr. Dice. Uh, I'm sure Jim will get them up there, but I have an earlier announcement. Uh, one of our residents, June 8th, on July 30th, will be singing the national anthem at the Pittsburgh Pirate Game at PNC Park, for those of you who are interested. He also sings for a group called Band Together for Autism. I thought that was great. One of our residents was out there. <laughs> Uh, first announcement Tuesdays at Tons, and the next one is July 25th. The group is Detention. The food is Earth, Wheel, and Fire, which is wood fired pizza and Yellow Bridge Brewing, uh, from 6 30 to 8 p.m. at Townsend Park. Uh, next, the uh, a farm market continues down there on Thursdays from 3 to 7 down at the Medic One Murraysville Fire Department base, 3235. Sardis Road again from 3 to 7. It's, I understand it's been really busy. And last announcement I have tonight is everybody gets upset, but we have no choice but to repair the roads in the summertime, and there are delays. Um, we, we try to ask the crews to be as quick as possible moving the traffic through the areas, but uh, sometimes they're a little slower than what we would all like, and we've all sat in it, and it's frustrating. But do your best and try to avoid That brings us to comments by the Chief Administrator, Mr. Morrison. Um, I did have one comment. Uh, we received a dividend from our uh, MRM general liability program. Awesome. I believe it was approximately $2,200. Great. Thank you. Yeah, good news. Okay. This brings us to community input. Let me see if anyone signed up. Thank you. Okay, we <coughs> this evening. I think some of these people might have already spoken and left. Um, Tom Pike? Yeah, he left. Yeah. David King? Yeah. Rich Cromer? Right. Here. <coughs> and just state your name and address for the record. Sure. Uh, may it please the board, my name is Richard Cromer. Uh, I'm an attorney. I have two clients that I exercise power of attorney for sitting right here. They live, uh, George Dayab, Kendra Dayab. They live at 4115 Castellina Court. And I'm just here to make some comments on their behalf tonight. So sure. thank you for allowing me this opportunity. I understand it's three minutes. I should be good with that. Um, the reason why I'm here is we've heard some discussion about maybe a cell phone tower going in Townsend Park. I've spoken to Mr. Nesco a couple times. He's been very cooperative. Um, um, 
Verizon's counsel is a friend of mine, Joe Cortez. I've spoken to him as well. So I don't know where, we don't know where the, 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 the borough is today on um, the cell phone tower. But I want to make sure uh, my client's thoughts about it are clear. And um, they don't want this tower in their backyard. Um, I understand there's been some discussion about the tower being on a pad right up beside the baseball field. That's my client's backyard. Um, they don't want to look at this thing every day. Um, I have my two clients sitting here. I have two other clients that aren't here tonight. Um, Charlie Dayab's four years old, and Georgie Dayab is two years old. They don't want this tower in their backyard either. They don't want to wake up every day and look at it. I'm not here to talk about things like brain waves and microwaves and cancer and things like that that none of us know anything about. None of us do. This 5G technology has not been out there long enough. We don't know anything about it. But what we're just here to ask you to do is please consider these two and consider those two little girls that live in that house too when you decide to put an industrial structure in their backyard, if that's where you're leaning. Again, we, we don't know where you are. I'm not here to talk about zoning and things, but as I understand it, it's your park. This is not a situation where Verizon comes to you or Crown Cast or somebody else and they already have a lease, they already own a piece of property and they have a property interest. So I, again, maybe I'm wrong, but it's your land and they can't just put it wherever they want. They have to deal with you and they should have to deal with these two people as well and everybody else that lives on that community. Um, we think this will drive the property values down. Um, that's something we hope you consider. That's less tax revenue for you. It's going to affect your tax base. But more important, I get it. There maybe there's some benefit to these towers. Um, I, my phone, I have Verizon. I don't get good service when I'm in your area. I understand that. I've heard that from Verizon's lawyer as well. Maybe there is a need for this. But you got a big park. It doesn't need to be right next door in my client's house. Maybe it's going to cost Verizon another half million dollars to put up the hill. Tell them to put it up the hill. Okay, just please work with us. That's all we ask is we don't want it right next door to our house. There are options here. Verizon's not here with their foot on our throat. Risking, you're at risk of a million dollar legal bill in the Supreme Court and everything else. This is, we got a lot of room to work with here and I'm just here to say, you know, thanks for, for hearing me out. Um, uh, thanks for, you know, everything you guys do. My clients love living in Murraysville. You know, if this tower goes up, they, they, I've heard the word move come out of their mouth um, because of this. Uh, so um, we're just asking you at this early stage, before any kind of decisions are made, when, when, when we have options, that you, uh, you know, please just think about these two and those two little girls before you um, put this industrial structure in their, in their, in their backyard. Right. Duly noted, sir. Yep. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. hearing me out. Yep. And I believe there will be a meeting coming up. August 2nd. August 2nd, where that will be an agenda item. So we'll get into some robust discussion about it. So. Sure. I'm you might see me again. Yep, probably. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. All right, thank you. That brings us to Joyce Perhack. Hi, Joyce Perhack, 4102 Castellina Court. I just wanted to inquire if there's any progress on the gate issue uh, between Castellina and Townsend Park. Jim? I cannot speak to that. I know there have been discussions and the research has been done, um, but I don't know what the, for me to say something at this point yeah. may not be accurate. Yeah, no, we're, we're sorry, Ms. Perhack, but Mr. Nesico's on vacation this week and he was the one running that down. So lo and behold, but you know, not to push everything to August 2nd, but we should have an update for you before then. Now, has Mr. Nesico been in touch with you? No. Can you write down your contact info on a piece of paper or something before you leave and just give it to me and then I can follow up with you? Sure. Okay. That's and we'll good. do so. All right. Thank you. you. Ma'am, ma would you put um, your address and your telephone number there on the sign-in sheet and then? Well, yeah, we have the address. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I have the sign-in oh, sheet oh, here. I'm sorry. Back up. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, now no one else had signed up, but for the good of the order, would anyone else like to give comment? Okay, seeing none, we will move into our liaison comments and committee reports. Uh, let's start at this end, Jamie. I have no new update. Yep, pension didn't meet. <laughs> Tony? Uh, the, uh, Medic One meets next week. Okay, Carl? 
Uh, there was a meeting of the Planning Commission last week. It was an advisory meeting uh, held on behalf of uh, Eden Park Restaurant, and they're looking to expand their facility. Uh, Carl, your mic. Oh, was on. Ah. Uh. Is it on again? Yes. For now. Starting again. Uh, advisory meeting at the Planning Commission at Eaton Park Restaurant. And they're looking to expand the restaurant uh, 1,412 feet, which will also include a walk-in uh, freezer. They'll be losing uh, three parking spaces. Uh, it might be interesting that uh, the metric uh, calculation is that for every 60 feet of restaurant, you need uh, one parking space. Uh, there will be no ordering of food at the window. It'll be uh, you order ahead or you can uh, pick it up there and you can pay there, but you won't be ordering it there. Uh, there will, the restaurant, there's like 51 or 52 uh, Eaton Park restaurants throughout the uh, tri-state area. As you're looking at it from Route 22, the expansion will be on the right-hand side. And one final comment, that there will be steps leading to the plaza where the Dogs and Suds restaurant is. So that's, uh, that's going to be there. <coughs> and, uh, that was it. Okay. Carl, are they looking to request a waiver for parking spaces, or is losing those three spaces no, not going no to? Yeah. Okay. There, there may be required a parking study. They have to go back and evaluate. They did not include in their calculation the addition to the left of the building of the eating area. Um, they had identified three net losses because of some handicapped spaces they were putting in, et cetera. Uh, but they're to come back to the next planning commission meeting and provide that information and the determination will be made at that time if a parking study is required. Yeah, they're increasing the handicap from two to four. Good. Jason? The library meets tomorrow evening, so okay. I'll, I'll attend that. Awesome, thank you. And uh, FDMSA meets tomorrow at six as well. So that brings us to our workshop items. So we will begin with 9A, a discussion on the Westmoreland County time capsule request. Jim? Sure, I'll read a uh, letter received from the uh, Westmoreland County's 250th anniversary committee. Westmoreland County was founded in what is now Hannestown with the purpose of resisting tyrannical acts of Parliament and King George III and since then has continued to grow and thrive. As a county, we have seen the birth of Kevlar, the electric telegraph, and the banana split within our borders. We've been entertained by Shirley Jones, Water Rollins, in case you didn't know the beloved writer of Frosty the Snowman, and the music of Paul Duchesne of Matchbox 20. As part of our 250th anniversary, we are bearing a time capsule in our new courtyard. We ask that you as a valued community leader consider donating an item for our time capsule. That item could be a lapel pin, a photo of your downtown, or any item you feel captures the essence of the present. Thank you for your commitment to the residents of Westmoreland County, and we look forward to working with you to build the next 250 years. Huh. That's pretty cool. So, um, I guess the idea would to try to come up something that would identify Murraysville going into the future. Suggestions from anyone? Any thoughts, ideas? There you go, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I'll ripe well. Um, put Jim in a box. We could maybe put a squib in the pen, Franklin, and take some comments or see if we got any comments from yeah. residents. Yeah. Maybe something with our tree sign. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I like the pen, Franklin idea too. Yeah. We have the postcard in there that we sell with the Murraysville tree sign yeah. on mm -hmm. it. Just as a question, Jim, is it is it normal that there no be there be no even though it may be the case no negatives? I don't know that. Okay. I know that the time capsule that's out here in the uh, pillar in front of the building uh, had a number of items in it, but I don't recall any pictures in it. Okay, well, we'll proceed with the Penn Franklin. Anyone on council thinks anything or has anything? <laughs> I think that's really cool. Okay, we will move on to our action items this evening. Can I have a motion for 13A, please? I'd like to make a motion to 
to authorize staff to advertise for a public hearing for the 2024 to 2028 capital improvements program on August 2nd, 2023 at 7 p.m. with a workshop immediately following. Second. Thank you, Jason and Jamie. JC? Hi, this is a yearly thing that we do when the capital improvement is coming out. Um, you'll get a copy of it on the 1st and it'll be available um, for public and then we'll have the meeting and the hearing. So this is just to get that advertised for the community. Yeah. No, awesome. Any, uh, obviously we do this every year and it's an awesome thing that Murraysville does that not everyone does. So questions or concerns about the advertisement? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Council. That brings us to 13B. Can I have a motion, please? Make a motion to authorize a general fund allocation of $8,500 to the 2023 concert in the park event. Second. Thank you, Jamie and Jason. Jim, pretty self-explanatory. Yes. Um, uh, just a little bit of background. The $8,500 is really covering cost, uh, increased cost of the rental stage, which we had hoped not to have to rent this year, but unfortunately have to, and uh, uh, some increase in the uh, fireworks. Uh, we did send out approximately 140 solicitations at the beginning of the year at local businesses uh, to try to raise funds for the project. Uh, we got about a $4,000 response. That's good. Um, so this amount uh, represents the shortfall between raising those funds and uh, mainly the uh, rental of the stage. Awesome. Council, questions, concerns, thoughts? <coughs> One thought uh, of the 137 uh, solic solicitation letters, if, if each one would have offered $12, it would have covered that. Uh, why are we getting such a, any thoughts on why such a poor response? I, I was not uh, actively involved in that, Mr. Stefanovich. I know that the letters were sent out. I got to say, even getting 4,000 is probably better than a lot of places, though. You know, because most gave zero and a lot probably gave, you know, a lot of money. Well, not a whole lot because 4,000. You know how many responses? Well, we all should have just uh, asked for $12. Yeah. Eh? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, to answer some of the questions. Um, it looked like about three years ago, before COVID hit, four years ago, we were more successful in raising <coughs> the community was getting very involved. When COVID hit, we took a year off. And it seems to be that year that we kind of had this you know, downward turn of people giving sponsorship. So we knew at the beginning of the year that we had to put forth the effort to get you know, it out there to more people. <coughs> so we did that blanket. We only had probably, wait, one, two, three, four, we only had eight people um, send back from the local businesses. Now, sometimes people do donate really close to the concert or even at the concert we're able to raise funds. Um, but that's kind of... So eight people made up the $4,000 donations? Uh, yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. So eight people were very generous. <laughs> Um, I would suggest it's a matter the council needs to address as part of the budgeting process. Uh, this event's getting upwards to $25,000, $30,000 a year. Um, so um, uh, either ideas on revenue raising efforts um, or how the venue is uh, presented should be discussed moving forward. Do we give any sort of banner or thanks to the individuals who do donate? Certainly the ones that donate get a uh, donation. And um, in the past, we've provided banners the day of the event yeah. along the stage and at the entrance to the facilities. So they are recognized. That just seems to always drive things up if people can actually submit their emblem and yeah. things like that, yeah. And perhaps we could uh, start to thank them on Channel 21 and have that float too. Yeah. Me, me, That's awesome. A lot of these businesses are being asked for money by other groups, obviously, throughout the year, too. So they probably spread it out. So, yep. Actually, what's our attendance at this event each year, roughly? 
I would say three to four thousand. It's a pretty good turnout. Your point, Jim, is these um, the, the cost keeps increasing year right. after year. Uh, hopefully, the um, the um, uh, stage will be in place next year. Um, so that's that's a big cost. It's about eight thousand dollars right there. Um, but uh, nevertheless, uh, the bands increase every year. The fireworks increase every year. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we are uh, charging the vendors, uh, the food trucks that come in. They get charged a fee. Uh, but you have to be careful there because if they don't make any money, they don't want to come back the following year. So the efforts have been made to try to raise money. Um, but there may be other people may have other ideas. We also need to remember that our fireworks are about 50% of the cost of a <coughs> normal fireworks display because we have volunteers setting them off. We're not paying a fireworks company to do that. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yant still doing that? Wow. Monty's recruiting people. <laughs> well, special thanks to Mr. Yant. Uh, loved him at my wedding. <laughs> Good fireworks. Yep, that's awesome. Okay, so we, we definitely have um, some work to do in terms of going forward. You know, as Jim said, we'll have to look into this, but any questions or concerns about this specific allocation that we're going to vote on? Okay. Hearing no further questions, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. That brings us to 14A. Can I have a motion, please? Make a motion to advertise. Hang on. Advertise. Yep. Ordinance number 1075-23, an ordinance of municipality of Murraysville. Amending Chapter 220-31, Standards for Specific Uses, adding subsection EE, injection well, to the Code of the Municipality of Murraysville. Second. Can I be on 13C? Mm. I'll come back to it. Wait, what? Should be 13C? No, they put that in 16A for the evening. I guess they changed it, yeah. It's okay. okay. Yeah, look, let's go with... So you just did 14A, you read it? Yeah. Okay, so let's get a second for 14A. I second. Okay, so we got Jamie and Tony for 14A. Um, obviously, we just talked about this. Any questions about the advertisement? Okay, the, the one thing I'll note is I think some good points were made about insurance and bonding and things mm -hmm. like that. So we should probably look into that for the final ordinance. That doesn't affect the advertisement, but just a note. Correct, and, and they are correct about the typo as well. Yep. The setback. Okay, so with that being noted, any final questions or concerns? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thanks, everybody. So now 14B, can I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to advertise ordinance number 1076-23, an ordinance adding chapter 219 to the code of municipality of Murraysville to regulate short-term rental units within the municipality and establish penalties for violations. Second. Thank you, Jason and Jamie. Any questions or concerns about the advertisement? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thanks, everybody. That brings us to now the Kellner Fireworks motion under 16A. Can I have a motion, please? Make a motion to approve the contract with Kellner's Fireworks Incorporated to purchase and exhibit fireworks for the 2023 Murraysville Concert in the Park event, August 12th, 2023. Second the motion. Okay. Jamie and Carl, any questions about the fireworks <coughs> display? No. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thanks, everybody. Any, any old business from anyone this evening? Just a question. Uh, Perhaps, Jim, uh, what is our status with the amphitheater? Waiting on uh, DEP and PDS permit. Okay. Okay. Do we have any, uh, any word or news from the demolition? It should be coming up here pretty soon. I think uh, the last 60-day clock started in, uh, either, uh, in late May, so it should be here shortly. 
Now, is this about when we would start receiving offers for the property, or how does that normally work? As far as? The demolition property? Is that what we're talking about? No, 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 about? talking the about the amphitheater. amphitheater. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm confused. That's right. Okay. Any new business from anyone? Well, following back to the old business, did we, okay. did we hear anything from that, the um, auction, the sheriff sale, short sale, whatever was going on with that demolition house? Couldn't Nothing answer yet. that, sorry. That's all right. Wes, do you hear anything? I haven't all? heard anything, Dr. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Any old business, or excuse me, any new business from anyone? Okay, there's no executive session, no outstanding action items. One more motion, please. Motion, motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Council. I enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs>